If you've ever been told to avoid saturated fat while being encouraged to eat more carbohydrates, this video explains a contradiction most people never hear. In the next few minutes, you'll understand how carbohydrates can be converted into saturated fat by the liver and why this drives high triglycerides and why eating saturated fat in a low carbohydrate context is metabolically very different. This understanding can completely change how you interpret your labs and how you advocate for your health. Many people leave the doctor's office with advice that sounds like this. Your triglycerides are high. Reduce saturated fat, choose low fat foods, increase whole grains. On the surface, that seems logical, but what rarely is explained is what your liver actually does with the carbohydrates, especially when intake exceeds what the body can handle. That missing explanation is where the contradiction begins. Your body can store only a limited amount of carbohydrates as glycogen. And once those storage tanks are full, excess carbohydrates, especially sugar, refined starches, and alcohol must be processed by the liver. The liver converts that excess into fat through a pathway called de novo lipogenesis. And here's the part most people never hear. The primary fat produced through this process is palmitic acid. It is a saturated fat. So when carbohydrate intake exceeds metabolic capacity, the liver doesn't just store sugar, it manufactures saturated fat. That newly created fat doesn't stay in the liver. It's packaged into triglycerides, released into the bloodstream, and transported as VLDL particles. That stands for very low density lipoproteins. This is why triglycerides rise most reliably with sugar, refined carbohydrates, alcohol, not dietary fat. This also explains why someone can follow low fat advice very carefully and still watch their triglycerides climb. So here's the contradiction. People are told to avoid saturated fat while being encouraged to eat more carbohydrates. But physiologically, excess carbohydrates are converted into fat in the liver, including saturated fat, and released as triglycerides. When that advice doesn't match physiology, the labs don't improve no matter how carefully someone follows the plan. At this point, a very reasonable question comes up. If saturated fat can be stored regardless of where it comes from, why does it matter whether it's eaten or made by the liver? The fat molecule itself isn't different. Saturated fat is saturated fat. What is different is the metabolic environment that required the liver to make it. So when saturated fat is eaten in a low carbohydrate context, insulin remains relatively low. That fat can be used for energy stored and released later on when it's needed. Triglycerides are often stable or falling and liver fat frequently improves. But de novo lipogenesis only turns on when carbohydrate intake exceeds metabolic capacity. In that state, insulin is elevated, glycogen stores are full, the liver is under pressure to convert sugar into fat. That process raises triglycerides, promotes fatty liver, and signals metabolic overload. So it's not that the fat made by the liver is worse, it's that Needing to make it at all tells us the system is already strained. So why does this matter for patients? This understanding changes the conversation. Instead of confusion or frustration, patients can ask better questions. Could my triglycerides be driven by excess carbohydrates rather than dietary fat? What role might insulin and liver fat be playing here? Would reducing refined carbohydrates help normalize these labs? 
This reframes the issue from effort to physiology. It also explains why low carbohydrate approaches so often lower triglycerides, improve HDL, and reduce fatty liver, even when saturated fat intake increases. When it comes right down to it, triglycerides aren't mysterious. They're not random. They are a metabolic signal. And once you understand how carbohydrates can be converted into saturated fat in the liver, you stop fearing food and start understanding cause and effect. Metabolism always tells the truth and informed patients become better partners in their care. This is Dr. Rose. I'll see you in the next video.